Today we're testing the all-wheel drive capability of the 2024 Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road here at our Peninsula Proving Grounds. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Welcome to a very wet day at our Peninsula Proving Grounds. Here we have a number of courses that test the all-wheel drive capability of trucks, SUVs, and crossovers. This is, of course, the 2024 Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road. This is the most off-road ready version of the RAV4 you can buy today. Under the hood is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four-cylinder engine. This produces a peak 203 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. It also has a standard eight-speed automatic transmission that is connected to Toyota's dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive. Multi-terrain select is standard at this trim level to help manage power distribution in tricky situations. On the automatic transmission, gears two through eight do have a lockup to help reduce power loss. The 18-inch TRD alloy wheels look great. The tires here are Falcon Wild Peak Trails. Now these are a special OEM version of the Wild Peak. They're not the same one you get in retail. They actually have less tread wear and they're not peak rated, which the proper Wild Peak Trails are if you buy them from any dealer. Suspension is tuned by TRD with a multi-link setup in the back and jounce bumpers to reduce shocks on hard impacts. It also gets a front skid plate. Inside, you get a nice list of standard features, including power adjustable seats wrapped in Softex synthetic leather. They're both heated and cooled. There's also a heated steering wheel, sunroof, wireless charging, and mud mats. In the middle, there's a 10.5 inch touchscreen featuring the latest Toyota infotainment system. This also supports wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. Advanced safety features include blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alerts, in addition to collision mitigation. EPA rates economy at 25 miles to the gallon in the city and 32 on the highway. One of the biggest changes for 2024 is this color. It's called Army Green. It was previously available on the Forerunner. Prices you see it here with the optional weather package, 41,925 US dollars, including destination. The plan today is simple. First, we're gonna get wet. Second, <laughs> we're gonna put this 2024 Toyota RAV4 TRD off-road against multiple courses right here at our Peninsula Proving Grounds. Oh man, it is wet and cold today. Let's get this wet coat off. There we go. Okay. Woo, it's powered up. Get these seat warmers going. Woo, yikes. <sighs> so sometimes schedules just work that you got to film on a certain day. And today is the day and it is it's like 38 degrees and it's raining and everything is still frozen from yesterday and it's just miserable. <laughs> oh, it's kind of nice. As soon as I turn on the car here, wireless Apple CarPlay automatically connects my devices. I didn't have to do a thing, which is nice. CarPlay looks really good on this new 10 inch display. I really actually like this size of display. Around 10 inches is just about right if you're going in this format. On the widescreen, the 12 inch is also nice. Of course, this still has our digital gauge cluster in the middle. We get the soft text wrapped steering wheel with all the adaptive cruise control stuff over there. Uh, and then I can control stereo voice commands and all that with the left. Uh, I can go through a number of different menu items here. I feel like I've done RAV4 so many times and that hasn't changed much. But there are things I like about this interior. It's, it's getting a little bit up there in the older side, but I think it's still a very good looking interior uh, with you know, quality where your fingers touch. And that's, that's a really good thing. One thing that this does have, which is kind of cool, is a digital rear view mirror with the back fully loaded all the way to the top. You can still see through it because the camera is actually mounted in the back uh, window. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, uh, this isn't really a full, full, full review because we're not doing any on-road, but uh, we are going to hit the off-road course here. And this is probably going to be a little shorter video, but I think that's okay. Not everything has to be a 30-minute epic, although I don't mind it. Right. Let's turn that off. Let's roll up to the first course. 
So this is our Peninsula Proving Grounds, for those who do not know. Uh, this is a five acre plot property that we have where we're building out a number of courses, everything from easy to really, really difficult. And we're just getting started. We took possession of this place like a month ago. So here we are at the start of what we call the easy course or the fun forest. This basically has a slight climb in and then you have ditches on either side, which is gonna rock the vehicle left and right. The whole point of this is that it's gonna lift wheels off the ground, which will then require the system to push power left or right. And then you're gonna watch for wheel braking kicking in if the wheels just are spinning, then there's no wheel braking, and that means there's no power going left to right. But what you should see based on the multi-terrain select modes is those wheels stopping. When they stop, the power has to go somewhere, ideally to the wheel with grip. Now, this vehicle is special in that it has a twin clutch rear drive unit, which allow it to proactively send power one wheel or the other without relying on wheel braking. Watch what the wheels are doing and how power is distributed, because that's really what makes one vehicle better than the other when it comes to these crossovers that rely on the wheel braking systems. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start just in normal mode so you can see what a non-MTS mode looks like as we climb up this steep grade. I wish this had an inclinometer, but it doesn't. So once we get up here, we're then gonna lift a wheel Okay, so wheels are lifting. You can see how wheels are spinning. There is some wheel braking, even in normal mode, which is interesting. That is kind of interesting. Now let's go back and we'll redo that again in rock and dirt. That would be a little less wheel spin. So let's see what that wheel braking looks like on the outside. Okay, I'm gonna come up here. You can really hear that system. It's applying the wheel brake to the front left and then using that rear drive unit to push us up and over. Okay, very effective right there. Now let's see how it does inside the fun forest. So at this point, I'm gonna go, just go ahead and proceed in rock and dirt mode, because that worked pretty good. And I'm gonna put, dip my driver's side wheel down, lift that back wheel, and then climb back up out. And when I climb out, we're gonna lose traction a little bit. Now it needs to put that effort down so that we can move forward. Nice. Now here's the dip that ate the Passport. You know, the Honda Passport couldn't get through this last time we tried it. It's a little disappointing, but let's see how well this one does. Now moving here, if we do rub under the engine, that's actually okay on this vehicle because we have a big metal skid plate under there, which I'm really happy to see. So now, Driving up there, and then gonna cut left. This will then remove traction off <laughs> one set of wheels. And we're gonna move forward here. And this is really reliant to make sure that we track with the way I'm pointing. And yeah, power puts it down. Now, when we did a snow test with this vehicle versus the Super Cross Track, uh, it actually overheated its all wheel drive system. Um, but that was a very unusual circumstance where we were going through a foot of snow and it was really, really hard. I mean, it was pounding on the system. Now granted, the Subaru didn't fail, but if you are looking for those kind of conditions, like, you know, foot deep snow, you really should consider, like if that's a regular thing for you, get something like a 4Runner or get something like a Grand Cherokee, because those are more built for those kind of extreme conditions. This one is for the occasional trail, and not really rock crawling or going through multi-feet of snow. I think that's a fair assessment. Still would have rather it didn't overheat, but it is what it is. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the logs. Oh, uh, right after we cross this tall lump. Mm, a little rubbing. Okay, there's the logs. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> I'm really surprised to rub back there because 8.6 inches of ground clearance. 
So here we have the logs. This again will test ground clearance and it's just a different method for climbing. Now this one is a more delicate climb over uh, because we don't want to disrupt the logs and we don't want to dig into the sand. Uh, also this would be where we would test a front camera system but this doesn't have one. It only has a reverse camera. Although the reverse camera is nice and big and it's pretty easy to see so I do like that. Would have loved to have a front camera especially at this price point. This thing isn't cheap. This would definitely be a rock and dirt setting. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna to try to climb over here. Now this isn't particularly hard. It's just gonna show off how this system works. Also gives us a chance to kind of, you know, try out the crawl ratio here, which actually is pretty good. Again, considering it's a CUV without a dual range gearbox. Power to all four wheels as we climb over. By a little spin. Whoa, 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 whoa. Power comes on when it comes on. <laughs> Got a little shifty there. Oh, and down we go. So I guess you could say this is kind of like a rock crawl, but for CUVs. Logs are a little softer, but they are rollier, definitely. Right. Well, let's go to the other side of the course and see what we can find, okay? Okay, now that we got over the logs, let's just get by this tree without hitting it. Again, camera would be nice. We'll be fine here. So we got some lumpy sand to get through, but it's never really that big of an issue, especially when it's wet like this. Okay, now let's move on to the other side of the course and see what we can see. At this point, I can turn off rock mud. I'll just hit the button there in the middle. Now, this side is still a work in progress. We have some boulders and we have some obstacles but uh, we got a lot more to do but we start here in the forest with a very tight drive in all right watch for those trees now this is not a particularly difficult trail but it is narrow so you get a good feel for a vehicle's drivability now again cameras would have been good here but i do feel like i have a good sense of where the wheels are hitting here. Uh, so I'm not really too concerned about running into anything accidentally, which is nice. Now there's a muddy section right up here, which is gonna be fun getting out, but I think it's mostly frozen because it's been so cold these last few days. So we'll see how far we sink. branches scratching the underside. I can hear them against the skid plate. Oop, oop, yeah, just go right into those ruts, why don't you? Okay, oof. Scrape the underside a little. Oops. Man, these ruts are hard. Ah, yeah, they're still frozen. Right, I'm gonna to try to straddle these a little bit more when I come in, maybe cut this way more and this way when I exit. So we definitely don't need the deep mud setting because that's, that's like hard as a rock. So right here we have a tilt and it is under construction. I'm going to be putting in stone steps uh, so we can maintain consistency. Right now it's loose gravel. Uh, this is gonna really pick up that rear wheel as we go down the slant. See <laughs> how low can we go? Oh, rubbing a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, let's take a look. Let's see what it looks like on the outside. <coughs> oh, yeah, we got it way up there. This gives me a chance to kind of look at the underside. Oh, it's nice and smooth. Skid plate goes back right past the oil. Uh, well, that's good. Let's continue. Okay, let's see. And, uh, won't let me do the seatbelt because we're at too much of an angle. So now I can't put my seatbelt on. I hate that. Let's go ahead and drive forward. Now this is more of a test of clearances than anything because it's using gravity to bring us down. Whoop. There we go. There we go. Put my seatbelt on now? Yes, yes I can. Now we have cross wheels kind of slip in there. And we're gonna lift the rear wheel on this little rock. Ooh, I don't know that approach. 
might yeah this doesn't have enough ground clearance we'll grind if we hit it so i'm gonna go wide instead maybe we'll get it on the way back okay let's flip this around and do this in reverse i mean my goal here isn't to like destroy body panels right we want to learn how the system works and clearly we've learned the clearances are an issue if you want to do anything you know a little bit more extreme but then you know toyota would love to sell you a forerunner and that's okay this climb out can actually be really tough because the surface is loose so i'm going to go ahead and do mud and sand as the setting which will give me excessive wheel spin now granted that'll dig us down a bit in the sand hopefully clearances aren't an issue but i'm expecting they might be so let's see if we can whoop that's just the skid plate no big deal we got the wheel all the way in the air up there yeah we're digging down let's not dig down let's back up Ah, doesn't want to do it. This is tough. I mean, admittedly, this is actually a really tough climb. A small sand climb, very, very hard for anything. Uh, let's back this up, reset, kind of get it a little bit on the right here. I got to watch out, I got a pile of rocks there for construction. Don't want to hit those. Can we get up? Oh, come on. It's trying. It's trying. We're just digging a hole. Okay. Combination tires. Traction system. It's just too hard. How much of a hole did we dig? Yeah, we dug a lot of hole there. Oh man, yeah, we dug we dug deep. It's like half a foot hole right there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and skip this one, I think. Um, we're just digging really deep here and uh, no reason to totally destroy these wheels. Right, well, let's uh, go out the frozen mud and wrap this up. <laughs> this is precisely where that backup camera is gonna come in handy. Swing around, nice big camera. Let's not hit the rocks on the inside. Take off our front bumper. So many caveats. Oop, mm -hmm. skid plate. Line up a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. Come on, go around, go around. Go straighten up here. It is a little tight. Now, as for, I know some people are looking at this bank to my driver's side and like, why don't you drive up that? Well, it's mostly because it's actually fairly hard on top. Uh, but the biggest thing is that it's firm and uh, we don't have enough brake over. Yeah, brake, brake over will simply not work there. Okay. Yeah, at least it has a nice big backup camera. That works great. I would like tracking lines though. Like they couldn't even give me tracking lines. I just feel like this vehicle is trying its best not to compete with 4Runner. Because pricing wise, it's getting up there. I'd get the 4Runner. Unless of course you have to commute and you need the better MPGs, in which case, yeah, okay, I totally get it. Okay, now to get out. Oh, uh, drive mode, um, I'm not gonna do, yeah, I wanna keep it in mud and sand because if it gets slippery, uh, we might want to have that extra wheel spin because even though it is frozen mud, it is still mud. Still going to do mud things. Also wish these were like 17 inch wheels, not 18s. 18, you just don't get a lot of sidewall on a vehicle of this size. Well, it was a very wet, cold day, <laughs> but I think we learned a lot about this RAV4 TRD off-road. You know, if you're going to take it over simple trails, I think it'd be fine. Uh, if you go up dirt roads, that kind of stuff, anything that is like a proper road. If you're gonna go legitimately off the road, that's gonna be kind of above this vehicle's pay grade, I think. And in that case, you definitely wanna consider something a little bit more off-road oriented, like a Jeep Wrangler, uh, or kind of best of both worlds, you could get a 4Runner. 
Forerunner is going to be all new next year, though. Uh, so if you're in the market and you want a Toyota and you want more off-road capability, I would really lean towards the Forerunner because this is good, but you do have a lot of compromises just because it's based on a CUV platform. It is very good for what it is. And today we had no issues with the all wheel drive system. It just, the tires can only do so much. Brake vectoring can only do so much, especially that sand climb out. It's really, really hard. And with that, thanks for watching. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Please hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment below. Do you think this is a good value? I want to hear your thoughts on it. But most of all, please watch our videos. We try to put in lots of different things. We took a Toyota Crown off-roading, right? So you never really know what you're going to see. Hopefully you enjoy what we make. We'll see you again right here real soon.